Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Okay, if you've been with the channel for a little while, I wanna thank you because you guys have been giving me awesome feedback on all of the solo videos and the one turns. And those have been a lot of fun, but I really wanna give you something new, right? I don't just wanna be the solo maddening mode guy. Uh, and I definitely don't wanna be just the one turn guy because those videos take <laughs> freaking a long time. But I thought something that would be cool would be for all of us to just play each other. So. In this new series, I want to be doing Elk Realm Trials, and I'm just going to pick and choose different battles that have happened, you know, overnight, my team as the AI, taking on you guys, and I thought it would be fun. So last night, I got attacked by a player from Japan, I had her card on the list, and she played for over 320 hours, so I knew she was going to be pretty epic. Uh, I can't say her name in Japanese, so the translation is just flower, and I'm not going to lie. I thought maybe she was going to be soft because of that name. Uh, I mean, I respect the name. I love it. But, hey, she was a badass, okay? And her strategy was super epic because here's the thing. I've grinded my team out a lot, but you're going to see how she was able to work around that. We're actually going to learn a ton from her today, so I'm really looking forward to jumping into this with you guys. Okay, so her first turn, or her first movement actually was really solid. She uses Elkrist and Lynn to kill my Gold Mary Veronica pairing with Astrostorm. Really good move because, of course, you guys know flying units are already very vulnerable to uh, bow attacks. So you knew that that was going to be a very, very strong blow, if not taking my character out completely. And hey, good for her. She took the character out completely. Uh, I had Summon Emblem with Veronica, so that's really annoying not be able to utilize it now good on her for that she then backed that mood up move up sorry with Cedal dancing for Elkrist which allowed Elkrist to call doubles so now we've got four illusions against us and remember it's not me in charge of this it's AI so AI is gonna be, gonna be making all of my movements for me that's gonna be an issue AI doesn't know what to go for you're gonna see as we go on in this battle it's just attack and everything at random so Calling these doubles, guys, remember for your own fights in Elk Realm Trials, this is going to be a really huge one for you. The AI will go for it. They will be stupid. Don't expect them to do anything good. So uh, this was a very, very good backup move for her as well. Okay, so next up, Alir and Krom move into the front line, adjacent to Yunaka and Vale. But... Elfred stays in the back to wait for my team coming in so that he can get his skill momentum plus activated So I noticed the way that she built her map is really clean good strategy to it, right? You can see all the pillars around Alir, So he's gonna be able to take advantage of Krom's surprise attack skill There's two lines to distract AI and all of her team stay in the middle at this view You can kind of see her team. I'm gonna let you know who they are before we go any further we got Vale paired with Soren, Yunaka paired with Tiki, Alir paired with Krom, I especially like that one. But she has Elfred paired with Sigurd, Elkrist paired with Lynn, as we've already seen, Ivy paired with Corin, Seedalt with Camilla, and Hortensia finally is paired with Byleth. So, starting off, my Selin and Byleth pairing actually attacked Vale from long distance. Pretty good move. I would say I didn't really expect that. And I actually really like how they backed that up by taking my Vale and Soren pairing to cast an engage attack on her front line, eliminates her Vale, and highly damages the other two. That's actually impressive, the fact that they were actually able to focus in on one unit like that still causing damage to the other two. I would say AI, was, that was actually a pretty 10 out of 10 attack. So now my Tamara ran up to an illusion and cast Override. The illusion is a useless attack, but like I said, you can expect AI to act this way. On the plus side, Cedal was damaged, but look, it's only 20 HP. This is one of her weakest characters and we only did 20 damage. Like overall, totally garbage move, but it was only made because the AI can't make distinctions that you yourself will be able to make. So 
Then she goes and runs away with the wrong weapon equipped in her slot and in a direction that just makes her a lone target off the right hand side. I do not like this at all. I gave her Cantor Plus one of my favorite inherited skills for a reason. Not so that she can run away and just make herself even more vulnerable. Frickin' Tamara, you disappoint me right now. The rest of this turn is super disappointing. Um, so, Alir was smart, right? He stayed in the bush, which made Fogato miss him. Also, Fogato is using the Ballista, which would have just been super weak even if he did hit. So, bad move there. Zelkov casts an engage and doesn't finish Yunaka. Now, the rest of my team should have made sure that their entire mission was finishing Yunaka, right? She's already damaged. Let's take her out. That's the whole point. We don't want her attacking, giving us more damage the next turn, or finishing one of us off. But, of course, that doesn't happen. AI then goes after just about every single rock on this freaking map. So, there's lessons to be learned here, right? AI are always going to attack the obstacles. And like we've said before, uh, with the illusions, once again, they don't know the difference. They'll attack that too. So, the way that she built her map was very smart. She's distracted a ton of my units. And now my team is not coming straight to her, right? She's picking us off one at a time. Very clever. Okay, now it's her turn, and she's going to start by using Elkris to attack my Tamara. Now, Tamara, as you remember, is in a very bad position from the last turn. The way that the AI used her was absolutely criminal, just bastardizing my Cantor Plus. Not good. And we're paying for the price for it now. Thankfully, though, Tamara doesn't die here because she has Holdout. Now, this is a great skill for the Outrealm Trials, specifically because each unit use could win or lose you the game. Stopping her from finishing Tamara with the holdout skill will either help Tamara actually survive the turn and be used next turn, or waste the movement of another enemy unit. Either way, I'll take that over her being finished during that turn. Next up, Ivy uses her engage attack on Vale, which casts Dreadful Aura. So now we can't move Vale on the next turn. That's a big deal. And Veil is a very important unit for us. So once again, very solid strategy here. She then uses Seedle to dance for Yunaka and then run to the healing tile. You really want to notice her use of the healing tiles here. This could be life or death for a character on the following turn. Yunaka has a healing skill as well. So she increases 30 HP just for moving. See how our enemy was able to maximize all of their healing options without even utilizing staves. I Love to see it, even though she's my enemy, so I hate to see it, but there's something to learn here, right? Okay, so to finish off her turn, she now uses a Leer to attack Zelkov, which ends up being very little damage, but she follows it up with Override from Elfred, which really brings Zelkov close to death here. I mean, I thought she was going to finish him off for sure, but she actually has Hortensia use Goddess Dance instead. That was a really good move, even though she doesn't kill him, because now... She's placed all of her units in such a good spot for the next turn that even during my attacking phase, I'm going to miss out on a lot of potential damage that it could have dealt. We start off with Alir casting an engage attack on Elfred. He has full health. It's not a good idea. There's another unit that has low health literally right next to him. So AI seems to not understand that it's all about taking out units as fast as you can. Next up, my Selin casts Goddess Dance, but for only one unit. Are you kidding me? You just saw how our enemy utilized it for four units. How are we going to just waste like this? That's, that's crazy. But as you can see here, look. Diamant's attacking the stone again. Like, 
whatever, fine, to be expected, I guess. Fogato finishes the first health bar of Valir. Good enough, I'm happy with that. And I noticed that all my units are also healing each other, so that's okay. If I were controlling it, I, I probably would be finishing the enemies off first, just due to the amount of units that she has. But healing is, is something that I think is probably acceptable. Now, I don't know why Alir is not attacking Elfrid. He has very low health, but you know, this is the, the cards were dealt, I suppose. You need to learn that uh, your team has to be exceptionally good to overcome some of the AI's bad moves. Or it can all come down to how you build your map, right? That's the real strategy here. Okay, so now we have her turn, and I gotta say, it's so funny to see at the start of her turn just how many skills Alir gains. And look at this. It felt like 10 seconds of just watching skills pop up on the screen. I I, I have no problems with it though. I love this because Alir's a great unit choice, so if you're gonna stack anyone, it should be Alir anyway. Alright, so now she has her Elfred attack Fogato and then run away. And Ivy locks down Tamara again with the Dreadful Aura. She really isn't doing any damage here, although you've seen her do it in multiple turns. Really, she's just trying to lock down Vale, who's one of our better units, so it's actually a really good move. She attacks my Lear with her Elkrist, and then my Lear crits her Elkrist. Oh, I gotta be honest, that one made me happy. I don't think she saw it coming, so I got a little bit of a laugh out of that. Hinaka and Tiki attack Elfred, and although he survives, she kills both units behind him. So this is a very good move. Um, at this point, I'm really wondering if I can even win this, but uh, overall, very solid, right? She then has Seedal dance for a Leer and uses her Leer to finish off my Elfred. I am down so many units at this time. Great turn for her. It was a good one. Okay, so here in my phase, Jean finishes Yunaka with Torrential Roar, which is a great way to start. This is backed up with another good move, Anna going for Elfred and finishing him with the Big Eleven Sword. It's good to see some ground being won back here. Tamara finally moves and gets to use Cantor Plus after her attack on Hortensia in yet another dumb way. I mean, it's been sad to see no use of healing tiles whatsoever. And Cantor Plus runs off into pointless directions that don't help anyone. Also, I just want to point out that there's another great example of Holdout being useful here. Tamara should have killed her for sure if she didn't have that, but now she gets to live for another turn. So, to finish off this turn, we have Marin being the biggest NPC of all time, attacking the rock just so that we have to end in the most useless way possible. Flower's next phase, she uses Hortensia to attack Demera. No kill, once again because of holdout, but definitely solid damage. Ivy misses, but triggers Dreadful Aura on Tamara. That's going to be annoying once again. Now we have a Leer attacking Anna with Surprise Attack. So whenever you're on a tile with a Void plus 30, and you have the skill Surprise Attack, the enemy cannot counter you. You can see just how well she's created her map and strategized all of her moves to maximize the potential of this skill. I, I definitely undervalued the skill until this match. Very cool to see. Anyway, her turn ends by dancing for Hortensia and using her to unfortunately kill my Tamara. That's gonna hurt. So my phase here might be one of the most frustrating things I've ever witnessed in my life. So John locks down Seedle. So Lynn 
kills an ally. Fair enough, right? I accept that. And then Zelkov goes and attacks Seedal. This is super unnecessary. First of all, Seedal's not that big of a threat. Um, but also, he's got Dreadful Aura, right? So he's not even really going to be able to utilize his skill of dancing for anyone next turn. He can't move. Why are we attacking him? AI is so dumb. And then Anna gets a chance to attack, right? So I didn't want to attack Seedal in the first place. But now he's damaged. We may as well finish him off. But nope. She attacks Ivy. She leaves him completely alone. So I don't really know what's going on. When I wouldn't attack Seedal here, they do. And when I would, they don't. Sure doesn't seem like my team, I'll tell you that much. And then we got Diamant and Marin. They're attacking stones off in the corner. I mean, this was a dismal turn, but uh, hopefully we can turn this around. Okay, at this point, attack phases are getting a lot simpler, right? We've lost a good amount of units here, so this is a very simple uh, turn for her. Hortensia attacks Anna, Lear attacks Zelkov. She triggers an engage attack of Camilla and Corrin and finishes my Anna, so that's gonna be annoying once again. Down another unit and it's not looking that great for me. In my phase, my team just heals, which I accept because the ones who don't heal are just attacking stones. So, like, originally I had a problem with healing because I wanted them to attack and finish enemies. But hey, if the alternative is just attacking stones, then I am happy for every unit who does that. Uh, besides that, I, I don't really know what else to say. We could have killed at least two units here, but literally we did nothing. Okay, so her phase here is actually quite interesting. Hortensia uses a staff called No Dust. Now, if you don't know what this staff is, it allows everyone on her team to get another engage. That is super useful. It's also super freaking expensive, uh, but clearly it was worth it for her here in this turn, right? So that's gonna be really good for her. My team definitely should have eliminated Hortensia. We failed to do so, and we're gonna pay the price for that now, right? And to finish her turn off, not only did she spit in our face with the No Dust Staff, but also she finishes my Zelkov with her Leer. Painful, painful turn for us. Okay, at this point I'm going to start firing through uh, enemy phases and user phases really fast. Because there's just not a whole lot going on. So for my turn, Selin heals, Diamond shoots and misses. Well, I just want to say here with the uh, Ballista, it's better off just not using them. The hit rate is way too low. It's kind of just useless. For her phase, Alir and Hortensia attack John. Ivy then finishes John, which is really annoying. He's kind of a goat for my team. I definitely like him. Okay, so for my phase, Diamant attacks Ivy, and Selin actually finishes Ivy, which is, is good to see. At least Selin's doing something here. She should have done that turns ago, but hey, we'll take it. It's good to have Diamant and Marin not attacking stones this turn as well. Hey, they're coming into battle, and they're going to be necessary at this point, so I'm very happy for that. For her phase, she uses Alir, Hortensia, and Seedal to attack Selin. Well, actually, Seedal uh, is bringing Hortensia back to attack Selin. And they're actually able to finish her, but it takes all three because once again, she has holdout. I mean, I've been harping on this, but I will keep saying it. Holdout is a fantastic skill. We wasted Seedal's movement in that one, right? Bringing back Hortensia just to kill Selin, so I'll take it. All 
right, so flipping over to my phase, my units are attacking a Leer, which is absolutely the wrong decision. He's stacked on this team. The two of them could certainly have killed Hortensia, but now, you know, they made their bed. They got a lie in it. They have to try to survive with more enemy units on the board than friendlies. That's their fault. For her phase, Hortensia and Cedal finish the first health bar of Diamant, which is not good. He is our guy. And Alir runs to the healing tile. Thing is, if we don't do something about Alir, he's just going to get all of his health back. And then the damage we did do was going to be useless. So we definitely need to be doing something next turn. So for my phase, it's finally good to see Diamant and Marin attack the same target. So here, they're actually able to take Hortensia off the board at last. It's a little late, but we'll take it. Uh, things are looking a little bit more even now. That being said, as soon as her turn comes around, Alir and Cedal kill Diamant, who we freaking needed, and they leave me with just Marin. And I'm not going to lie, if I got to be left with any character, I didn't really want it to be Marin. No offense, but So, for my turn, Marin attacks Alir, which puts her on the run for the next turn. Now, it looks like she wants to heal. This is a good spot to be in. There are very few turns left for her to win, uh, and my health is full. She's running away to heal them, so I may have this after all. I'm, I'm feeling all right about this. On my turn, I was actually thankful for just how stupid the AI is because he ran away to attack this stone but it just means that now they have to waste even more turns getting to me so it turns out that the stupidity was actually nice still I'm gonna say it is a red flag uh, because we have an understanding just how absolutely stupid the AI can get he attacks the stone with engage that is mind-blowing to see I swear the AI in maddening mode that I'm fighting against is not as dumb as the AI they're giving me. It definitely feels that way. Okay, so this is where it gets really exciting. There are four turns left, and she's chasing down my Marin, right? She's supposed to be healing, but she knows she doesn't have time to do it. My Marin is being an NPC. He's just... He's mindless. He's over here hitting this rock, not even caring what's going on. So now, she's only got three more turns. She's chasing after us. She doesn't have the health to even be attacking. And the pillars that she built, that helped her so much during the whole game, and this isn't a knock, right? The pillars were a good move for her. But now, they're working against her. And it's preventing her movement, so it's taking her longer to actually get to us. <laughs> And now she attacks, but my Marin finishes Alir. She thought that Mary would miss. I, to be honest, I kind of thought that you might too. But hey, I'm super happy with this. And now we're just against Seedal. He only has one health. He's against Marin with 62 health in dragon form. So, okay, I think I know. I think you know. And I do think that uh, Flower here that we're against knew as well. The way that this was going to end. And I have to say... No matter how it ends, freaking fantastic, eh? I, I love what we got a chance to learn here, and I love watching this battle. And so, of course, on my turn, you know, my Marin goes and finishes off Seedal, and that is the end of the game. It was a very exciting one. I totally enjoyed watching this. I, I enjoyed reviewing it with you guys, and I'm really just enjoying the Outrealm Trials altogether. So, I'm going to put my ID here in the description of the video. So, if anybody else wants to join this, you want to attack my team, maybe we can do some reviews of it. I, I love all the engagement that you guys have been giving me in the comments. And it seems like you really love this game. I really love this game. And I think this is a great way for us to, no pun intended, engage together, right? So, definitely check that out. And I will be looking for each and every one of you. You can let me know what your ID is as well uh, in the comments, so I'll actually be able to find you, and I'll know if you've attacked me. And uh, we can have a little fun with it, eh? It'll be a good time. 
Maybe I can pick on you a little bit in the video. Maybe you can pick on me a little bit back in the comments. But look, at the end of the day, I'm always going to be supportive about it because I just freaking love this game. And hey, I love you guys too. So, please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you're not subscribed but you're enjoying the videos, maybe you've seen one or two, I hope that we earned your subscription today. And if we didn't, you better believe I'm going to keep putting out more content until we finally do. So, with that being said, you're the best, and I will see you in the next video. 